EM at Bicker & Co., Southampton, England. We undertake no guarantee for goods damage in transit. As soon as the consignment was taken on board, we drew captain's attention to the fact that the vessel was unsuitable for the transport of robots, and we are therefore not responsible for spoiled freight. We beg to remain for Rossum's Universal Robots, yours truly. Ready? Yes. Another letter. To the EB Heisen Agency, New York, USA. We beg to acknowledge receipt of order for 5,000 robots. As you are setting your own vessel, please dispatch this cargo equal quantities of hard and soft coats to RUR, the same to be credited as part payment of the amount due to us. We beg to remain for Rossum's Universal Robots, yours truly. Ready? Yes. Another letter. Friedrichsburg, Hamburg, Germany. We beg to acknowledge receipt of order for 15,000 robots. Hello. This is the central office. Yes, sir. Well, send them a wire. Good. Where did I leave off? We beg to acknowledge receipt of order for 15,000 robots. 15,000 robots. 15,000 robots? Well, what is it? There's a lady, sir, asking to see you. A lady? Who is she? I don't know, sir. She brings you this card of introduction. President Glory, ask her to come in. Please, step this way. How do you do? How do you do? What can I do for you? You are Mr. Doman, the general manager. I am. I have come With to President Glory's car. That is quite sufficient. President Glory is my father. I am Helena Glory. Miss Glory? This is such a great honor for us to be allowed to welcome our great president's daughter. Uh, you can't show me the door? Please sit down. So you may go. How can I be of service to you, Miss Glory? I have come to have a look at our famous works where people are manufactured, like all visitors. Well, there is no objection. I thought it was forbidden. To towards the factory. Why, oh, yes, of course. Everybody comes with someone's visiting car, Miss Glory. And you show them. Only certain things. The manufacture of artificial people is a secret process. If only you knew how enormously that. Interesting. You're only talking about nothing else. Why don't you let me finish speaking? I beg your pardon. Did you want to say something different? I only wanted to ask whether I could make a special exception and show you our factory. Why, certainly, Miss Glory. How did you know I wanted to ask that? Well, they all do. Uh, but we shall consider it a special honor to show you more than we do the rest. Thank you. But you must agree not to divulge. My word them. of honor. Thank you. Won't you raise your bed? Of course. You want to see whether I'm spy or not. <laughs> I beg your pardon. What is it? Well, would you mind releasing my hand? I beg your pardon. <laughs> How cautious you have to be here, don't you? Of course. We, that is. Well, what is it? What's the matter? I'm remarkably pleased. Did you have a pleasant crossing? Yes. No difficulty. Why? What I mean to say is, you're so young. May we go straight into the factory? Yes. 22, I think. 22 what? Years. 21. Why do you want to know? Because, as you will make a long stay, won't you? That depends on how much of the factory you shall. Oh, hang the factory. Oh, no, no, no. You shall see everything. Indeed, Miss Glory, you shall. Won't you please sit down? Thank you. But first, would you like to hear the story of the invention? Yes, indeed. It was in the year 2020 that old Rossum, the great physiologist, who was then quite a young scientist, took himself to this distant island for the purpose of studying the ocean fauna, full stop. Mm -hmm. On this occasion, he attempted by chemical synthesis to imitate the living matter known as protoplasm, until he suddenly discovered another substance, which behaved exactly like protoplasm, although its chemical composition was different. That was in the year 2032, exactly 540 years after the discovery of America. <laughs> Have you memorized that all by heart? Yes, you see, physiology is not in my line. Shall I go on? Yes, please. Now, what Ross wrote among his chemical specimens, nature has found only one method of organizing living matter. There is, however, another method, more simple, flexible, and rapid, which has not yet occurred to nature at all. The second method by which life can be developed was discovered by me today. Now, imagine him, Miss Gloria, writing those wonderful words over some colonial mess a dog would look at. Imagine him sitting over the test tube, thinking how the whole tree of life would grow from it, how all animals would proceed from it, beginning with some sort of beetle, an ending with a man. A man of different substance from us. Miss Glory, that was a tremendous moment. Well, 
Now, the thing was how to get the light out of the test tubes and hasten development and form bones, organs, nerves, and so on, and find such substances as catalytics, enzymes, hormones, and so forth. In short, you understand. Very little, I'm afraid. Oh, never mind. You see, with the help of his tinctures, he could make whatever he wanted. Well, he could have produced the Medusa with the, the brain of a Socrates or a worm 50 yards long. But being without a grain of humor, he took it into his hand to make a sort of vertebrae, or perhaps a man. Now, this artificial living matter of his had a raging thirst for life. And in mind being mixed or sewn together, now that could be done with natural albumin, and that's how we said about it. About what? About imitating nature. You see, first of all, he tried making an artificial dog. That took him several years and resulted in a sort of stunted calf which died in a few days. I'll show it to you in the museum. Then he said about the manufacture of man. And I am to divulge this to no one? To nobody in the world. What a pity that it's to be found in all the school books of both Europe and America. <laughs> yes. But you know what isn't in the school books? That old Rossum was mad. Seriously, in his glory, you must keep this to yourself. The old crank wanted to actually make people. You do make people. Approximately, Miss Glory, but old Rossum meant it literally. He wanted to become a sort of scientific substitute for God. Oh, he was a fearful materialist then, and that's why he did it all. His sole purpose was nothing more nor less than to prove that God was no longer necessary. Do you know anything about anatomy? Very little. Neither do I. Well, he then set about to manufacture everything as in the human body. I'll show you the museum the bungling attempt it took him ten years to produce. It was to have been a man, but it lived for three short days only. Then, up came young Rossum, an engineer. Oh, Miss Glory, he was a wonderful fellow. Oh, when he saw what a mess of it the old man was making, he said, it's absurd to spend ten years making a man. If you can't make him quicker than nature, you might as well shut up shop. And then he said about learning anatomy himself. There's nothing about that in the school books. No. The school books are full of paid advertisements and rubbish. <laughs> what the school books say of the united effort of the two great Rossums is only a fairy tale. Well, they used to have a dreadful rouse. I mean, the old atheist had the slightest conception of industrial matters. And the end of it was that young Rossum shut him up in some laboratory or other and let him frittle the time away with his monstrosities while he himself started on the business from an engineer's point of view. And then old Rossum cursed him before he died and managed to botch up two physiological horrors. Then one day they found him dead in the laboratory, and that's his whole story. And the young man? Well, anyone who has studied anatomy will see at once that man is too complicated and that an engineer can make him more simply. So young Rossum began to overhaul anatomy and try to see what could be left out or simplified. In short, well, this is a boring news for you? No, you're, it's awfully interesting. Now, young Rossum said to himself, a man is something that feels happy, hmm? plays the piano, likes going for a walk, and. In fact, I to do a whole lot of things that are really unnecessary. Oh. That are unnecessary when he wants to, let us say, leave or count. Do you play piano? Yes. That's good. But, but a working machine must not play piano, must not feel happy, must not do a whole lot of other things. A gasoline motor must not have ornaments or tassels in story. And to manufacture artificial workers is the same thing as to manufacture gasoline motors. The process must be of the simplest and the product of the best from a practical point of view. What sort of worker do you think is best from a practical point of view? What? <laughs> what sort of worker do you think is best from a practical point of view? Oh, um, perhaps one who is most honest and hardworking. No, the one that is the cheapest, the one whose requirements are the smallest. The young Ross sought some kind of worker with the minimum amount of requirements. Oh, well, you have to simplify it. In fact, he rejected man and made the robot. My dear Miss Glory, the, the robots are not people. Mechanically, they are more perfect than we are. They have an enormously developed intelligence, but they have no soul. How do you know they have no soul? Have you ever seen what a robot looks like inside? No. Very neat, very simple. Really a beautiful piece of work. Not much in it, but everything in flawless order. The product of an engineer is technically at a higher pitch of perfection than a product of nature. But man is supposed to be the product of God. All the worse. God has the least notion of modern engineering. Would you then believe that young Rossum proceeded to play at being God? How do you mean? 
he began to manufacture super robots. Regular giants they were. He tried to build it 12 feet tall, but you wouldn't imagine what a failure they were. Failure. Yes. Their limbs used to keep snapping off. Mm -hmm. Evidently, our planet is too small for giants. Now we only make robots of normal size and a very high class and a huge finish. I saw the first robots at home. The town council had bought them for engaged them for work. Who bought them, Beavis the Glory? Robots are bought and sold. These ones are employed as street sweepers. I used to always watch them sweeping. They were so strange and quiet. Rossum's Universal Robot Factory doesn't produce a uniform brand of robots. We have robots of finer and coarser grades. The best will live about 20 years. And then they die? Yes, they get used up. Marius, bring in a sample of the manual labor robot. I'll show you specimens of the two extremes. This first grade is comparatively inexpensive and produced in vast quantities. There you are. As powerful as a small tractor, guaranteed to have average intelligence. That'll do, Marius. So strange. Uh, did you meet my new typist? I didn't notice her. Tell her. Let Miss Glory see you. Pleased to meet you. You must find it terribly dull in this out of the way spot, don't you? I do not know, Miss Glory. Where are you from? From the factory. Oh, you were born there? I was made there. <laughs> what? Sola is a robot. Best degree. I, I beg your pardon, I. Oh, Sola isn't angry. See, Miss Glory. The kind of skin do you make? Feel her face. No, no. You wouldn't believe she was made of a different material from us, would you? Turn around, Sala. Stop, stop. Talk to Miss Glory, Sala. Please, sit down. Did you have a pleasant crossing? Yes, certainly. Don't go back on the Amelia, Miss Glory. The barometer is falling steadily. Wait for the Pennsylvania. That's a good, powerful vessel. What's its speed? 20 knots, 50,000 tons. One of the latest vessels, Miss Glory. A crew of 1,500. Captain Murphy. Eight boilers. 42 robots. That'll do, Sala. And that shows your knowledge of French. You know French? I know four languages. I can write, Dear Sir, Monsieur, Yes or Hair, This is outrageous. <laughs> Sula is not a robot. Sula is a girl just like me. Sula, why are you putting up with such a hoax? I am a robot. No, <laughs> you're not telling me the truth. I know he's forced you to do this for some kind of advertisement. Sula, you're a girl just like me, aren't you? I'm sorry, Miss Glory. Sula is a robot. It's a lie. What? Excuse me. Then I must convince you. Marius, take Sula into the dissecting room and tell them to open her up at once. Where? Into the dissecting room. Once they've cut her open, you can go and have a look. No, no! Excuse me, who spoke of lies? <laughs> you wouldn't have her killed. You can't kill machines. Sula, do not be afraid. I'm not going to let you go. Tell me, my dear, are they always so cruel to you? You mustn't put up the two of you. You mustn't. I am a robot. That doesn't matter. You are just as good as we are. Sula, you wouldn't let yourself be cut to pieces. Yes. <laughs> You're not afraid of death, then? I cannot say, Miss Glory. Do you know what would happen to you in there? Yes. I should cease to move. Dreadful. Marius, tell me where you are. Marius, the robot. <laughs> and would you take Sala into the dissecting room? Yes. Would you feel sorry for her? I cannot tell. What would happen to her? She would cease to move. They would put her into the stamping mill. Marius, that is death. Aren't you afraid of death? No. You see, Miss Glory, the robots have no interest in life. They have no enjoyments. They are less than so much grass. Stop. Send them away. Mary so you may go. How terrible! It is outrageous what you're doing. Why outrageous? I don't know, but it is. Why do you call her Sula? Isn't it a nice name? It's a man's name. Sula is a Roman general. We thought Marius and Sula were lovers. Marius and Sula were generals who fought against each other in the year. I've forgotten. Them. Come here to her. What? Come here. What do you see? Workplayers? Robots. All our work people are robots. And down there, can you see anything? Some type of office? Accounting house. And in it. A lot of officials? Robots. All our officials are robots. And when I show you the factory... <laughs> no. 
we have to blow the whistle because the robot's going to want to stop work. In two hours, I'll show you the kneading trough. The kneading trough? Yes, the pestle where we beat the paste. In it, we mix the ingredients for a thousand robots in one operation. I'll then throw the vats for the preparation of brain, liver, and so on. Oh, then I'll show you the bone factory. After that, I'll show you the spinning mill. Spinning mill? Yes, where the weaving of nerves and veins, thousands and miles of digestive tubes pass through it at a time. Can't we talk about something else? Perhaps that would be better. You see, Miss Glory, there's only a handful of us among 100,000 robots and not one woman. We talk about nothing but the factory all day, every day. It's really as if we were under some kind of curse, Miss Glory. I'm sorry I said that you were lying. Come in. I uh, beg your pardon? I hope we don't intrude. No, 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 come in, come in. Miss <laughs> Glory, you are Fabry, Gall, Paul Meyer, and Alphys. How do you do? This is President Glory's daughter. Oh, oh yeah. highly honored, I'm sure. Welcome, Miss Glory. Hello. What's up? Oh, come in, Busman. Miss Glory, this is Busman. Busman, this is President Glory's daughter. Oh, by Jove, that's fine. Miss Glory, may we send a cablegram to the papers about your arrival? No, no, please don't. Sit down. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> what kind of uh, crossing are you uh, Are you going to stay long? I want to capture you. You come up with a million. Be quiet and let Miss Glory speak. Hmm? What am I supposed to speak to her about? Whatever you like. May I speak frankly? Why, of course. Does it ever distress you the way that you're treated? By whom, may I ask? Why? Everyone. Treated? What makes you think we're treated? Do you ever think that you could be living a better life? Oh, well, um, that depends on what you mean, Miss Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that it's outrageous. The whole of Europe is talking about the way you're being treated. That's why I came down here to see for myself. And I must tell you, it's a thousand times worse than I could have imagined. How do you put up with it? Put up with what? Good heavens! You are living creatures just like us. Just like the whole of Europe. Just like the whole world. It's disgraceful that you live like this. Gracious, <laughs> Miss Glory. How will she not? Far wrong. We live here just like savages. Worse than savages. May I call you brothers? Why not? <laughs> brothers. I have not come here as the President's daughter. I have come on behalf of the Humanity League. Brothers. The Humanity League now has over 200,000 members. That's 200,000 people that are on your side and offered you their help. 200,000 people? Miss Glory, that's a tiny sum. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> See, they've not forgotten us. They're offering us help. What, what help? A, a theater, for instance? An orchestra? Ooh. More than that. Just you? Never mind, fellas. I'll stay as long as it's necessary. By Joe, that's good. Go in. I'm going to get the best room ready for Miss Glory. Just a minute. You see, I'm afraid Miss Glory is of the opinion she's been talking to robots. Of course I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Glory, but these gentlemen are human beings just like us. You're not robots? Not robots. Oh. Robots indeed. Thanks. Upon my honor, Miss Glory, we aren't robots. <laughs> then why did you tell me all of your officials are robots? Yes, the officials, but not the managers. Oh, allow me, Miss Glory. This is Mr. Fabric, General Technical Manager of RUR. Dr. Gall, Head of the Psychological and Experimental Department. Dr. Hollemeyer, Head of the Institute for the Psychological Training of Robots. <laughs> Council Buston, General Business Manager. And Mr. Alphys, Head of the Building Department at RUR. Uh, just a builder. Excuse me, gentlemen, have I done something dreadful? Oh, not at all, Miss Glory. Please, sit down. I'm a stupid girl. Send me back by the next ship. Oh, not for anything in the world, Miss Glory. Why should we send you back? Because you know I come to disturb your robots? My dear Miss we've had close upon a hundred saviors and prophets here. Every ship brings us some. The missionary, Salvation Army, anarchists, all sorts. It's astonishing the number of idiots and churches there are in the world. <laughs> and you let them speak to the robots? So far, we let them all. Why not? The robots only remember everything. Really, they don't even laugh at what the people say. It's incredible. If it would amuse you, oh, take me down to the robot warehouse. Hold about 300,000. About 347,000. Good. <laughs> and there, you can say whatever you'd like to them. You can read the Bible, or set the multiplication table, whatever you please. You can even preach to them about human rights. I just think if you were to show them a little love. Not impossible, Miss Lori. Nothing as hard as like a robot. 
What do you make them for then? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. What are robots made for? For work, Miss Lori. One robot can replace two and a half workmen. The human machine was terribly imperfect. It has to be removed sooner or later. It was too expensive. It was not effective. It no longer answers the requirements of modern engineering. Nature has no idea of keeping pace with modern labor. For example, from a from a technical point of view, the whole of childhood is a sheer absurdity. So much time lost in it. No. <laughs> Pardon me. But kindly tell me what's the real aim of your league, the humanity. What we really want is to protect the robots and ensure good treatment for them. Not that that obvious either. The machine has to be treated properly. Upon my soul, I approve of that. I don't like damaged articles. <laughs> Please, Miss Boyd, go to solace contributing or regular foundation members of your league. No, you don't understand me. What we really want is to liberate the robots. <laughs> and how do you propose to do that? <laughs> they are to be dealt with like human beings. Oh, so I propose they are to, oh, to drink beer. To order us about? Why shouldn't they drink beer? Oh, and I propose they to receive wages. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> and what would they do with their wages? Tell me. They would buy what they need, what pleases them. Don't be very lovely, Miss Roy, only because nothing that does please the robots. Good heavens, I mean, what would they buy? You could bring the pineapple straw, whatever you like. It's all the same to them, they have no appetite. You're no interest in anything, Miss Glory. Why hang on? No one's ever yet to your robot smile. <laughs> Why don't you make them happier? They wouldn't do, Miss Glory. They only work. But they're so intelligent. Undoubtedly <laughs> so, but they're nothing else. They know whether their own <coughs> passion or soul. No love? Ha! Ah! <laughs> love? Rather not. Robots don't love. They don't even love themselves. Nor defiance? Defiance? I don't know. I mean, occasionally, from time to time. What? Nothing in particular. Occasionally, they seem to go off on their heads. It's kind of like epilepsy, you know? It's called the robot's cramp. They suddenly s sling out everything they're holding, stand still, gnash their teeth, and then they have to go into the standing room. <laughs> it's obviously some breakdown in the mechanism. A flaw in the works so that has to be removed. No, no. That's the soul. Uh, you think that the soul first shows itself by a gnashing of teeth? Perhaps it's some <coughs> sort of revolt. Perhaps it's a way to show that there's struggle within. If you could just infuse them with it. Well, that would be remedy, Miss Lori. You see, Dr. Gall was just working on some experiment. Oh, not with regard to that, Doman. At present, I am making pain nerves. Pain nerves? <laughs> yes. Uh, you see, the robots feel practically no bodily pain. Young Rawson provided them with too limited a nervous system. We must introduce suffering. <laughs> Why do you want them to feel pain? For industrial reasons, Miss Gloria. Uh, sometimes a, a robot will, will do damage to itself because it doesn't hurt it. It will stick its hand to the machine, break its fingers, smash itself in the head. It's all the same to a robot. We must provide them with pain. That's an automatic protection against damage. Will they be happier when they feel pain? Oh, on the contrary. But they will be more perfect from a technical point of view. <laughs> Why don't you create a soul for them? <laughs> That's not in our power. That's not in our interest. That would increase the cost of production. <laughs> oh, hang it on, my dear young lady. We turn them out at such a cheap rate. $150 each, fully dressed. And 15 years ago, they cost $10,000. 5 years ago, we used to buy clothes for them. Now we have our own weaving mill. And we even export cloth, five times cheaper than other factories. How much do you pay for a yard of cloth, Miss Glory? I'm not sure. I've forgotten. Good gracious, and you want to found a humanity league. It only costs a third now, Miss Glory. Everything costs a third of what it was. And the prices will still go lower, 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 like that. I understand. But bless your heart, Miss Glory, it means the cost of labor has gone down. A robot, food and all, costs only three quarters of a cent per hour. That's mighty important, you know. All factories will go pop like chestnuts if they don't at once buy robots to lower the cost of production. And get rid of your workmen? Why, of course. But in the meantime, we've dumped 500,000 robots on the Argentine Pampas to grow corn. Uh, how much do you pay for a pound of bread? I have no idea. Well, I'll tell you. Here in good old Europe, it costs only 50 cents. 50 cents for a pound of bread, and the Humanity League knows nothing about it. Miss Glory, what you don't understand is even that's too expensive. Why, in another five years' time, I would wager. What? Well, that the price of everything won't be a tenth of what it is now. In five years' time, we'll be up to our ears in corn and everything else. Yes. 
and all the workers throughout the world will be unemployed. Yes, Alcos, they will. Yes, Miss Glory, they will. But in 10 years, Rossum's universal robots will produce so much corn, so much cloth, so much everything, that things will be practically without price. And there will be no more poverty. All work will be done by living machines. Everybody will be free from worry and liberated from the degradation of labor. Everybody will live only to perfect himself. Will he? Of course. It's bound to happen. But then the servitude of man to man, the enslavement of man to matter, will cease. Of course, terrible things may happen at first, but that simply can't be avoided. <laughs> Nobody will get bread at the price of life and hatred. The robots will wash the feet of the beggar and prepare a bed for him in his house. Uh, Domin. Domin. What'd you say? It sounds too much like paradise. There was something good in service and something great in humility. There was some kind of virtue in toil and weariness. Perhaps. But we cannot reckon with what is lost when we set out to transform the world. Man shall be free and supreme. He shall have no other aim, nor other labor, nor other care than to perfect himself. He will cease to serve neither matter nor man. He will not be a machine or a device for production. He will be Lord of creation. Oh, yes. You have bewildered me. I should like to believe this. Well, you are younger than we are, Miss Glory. You will live to see it. True. Miss Glory, I Miss Glory left for us. Oh, yes, uh, Philman, ask her on behalf of all of us. Miss Glory, will you do us the honor? When you know why I've come. For it will be your candy, yes. Well, in that case, perhaps. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Glory, speak for five minutes. Oh, yeah, pardon me, too. We might have to get exactly five minutes. Glory. What have they all run off for? To cook, Miss Glory. To cook what? Lunch. The robots usually do our cooking. But as they took taste, it's not all together. <laughs> Dr. Hollemeyer knows an awful lot about grills, and God can make a kind of sauce, and Buster knows all about omelets. And what is the specialty of um, Mr. Your Builder? Oh, please. Yes. Nothing. He only lays a table. And Fadden will get together a little fruit. Our cuisine is very modest, Miss Glory. I wanted to ask you something. I wanted to ask you something, too. What do you want to ask me? Excuse me. You asked first. It might seem silly, but um, why do you manufacture female robots when, when... When sex means nothing to them? Yes. Well, there's a certain demand, you see. Servants, saleswomen, stenographers, the people are used to it. And both the male and female robots are mutually exclusively... Completely indifferent to each other, Miss Lori. There's no sign of any affection between them. How terrible. Why? So unnatural. One doesn't know whether to be disgusted by them or to hate them or to... To pity them. That's more like it. But, um, what do you want to ask me? I should like to ask you, Miss Helena, whether you will marry me. <laughs> <laughs> will you be my wife? No! The idea! I'm sure you'd marry any girl that came in here. Well, you look well, Helena. Young? Yes. Well, I need to marry one of them. Oh, I didn't lose my head. Until today. Then, uh, as soon as you look at your veil. But I don't want you, Rotary. You're mad. A man has to be a bit mad, Rotary. Right? <laughs> That's the best thing about it. <laughs> Suppose she heard you. Well, anyway, 
the Ultimus arrived just in time. You really think that's an egg? I don't know. <coughs> Aren't these flowers fine? Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is my new primrose and my new jasmine. I've discovered wonderful ways of developing flowers quickly. Splendid variety, too. Next year, I'll be making marks. Yeah. Next year? It's a good deal to know what's happening at Harv. Keep quiet. slightly bigger and more solid than most ships. <laughs> yes, but with guns. Oh, yes, with a few guns. <laughs> You'll travel like a queen, Helen. Harry, what is the meaning of this? Has something happened? Oh, good heavens, no. I say try these pearls. <laughs> Harry, have you had bad news? No, on, on the contrary, no letters have arrived for a whole week. <laughs> Nor telegrams? Nor telegrams. What does that mean? Holidays for us. <laughs> We just sit in the office, uh, put our feet on the table, and take a nap. It's glorious. No letters, no telegrams. Does that mean you get to stay with me today? That is, we will see. Do you remember ten years ago today? 
Miss Glory, it's such a great honor to welcome you. Oh, Mr. Manager, I'm so interested in your factory. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Glory, it's strictly forbidden. The manufacture of artificial people is a secret. But I oblige a young lady who has come a very long way. Certainly, Miss Glory, we have no secrets. <coughs> Are you sure, Harry? Yes. Well, I must warn you, sir. This young lady intends to do terrible things. Oh, good gracious, Miss Glory. Perhaps she doesn't want to marry you. Heaven forbid, she never dreamt of such a thing. She came here intending to stir up a revolt among your robots. The revolt of the robots! <laughs> Harry, what is the matter? <laughs> <laughs> right. A revolt of the robots. That's, that's a fine idea, Miss Glory. You, you, you'd have a much easier time causing our bolts and screws to rebel than our robots. Oh, you're 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 wonderful, Helen. Really, you you turned the heads of us all. I was fearfully impressed by you all back then. You were all so sure of yourselves, so strong. I seemed like this young girl who had lost her way among. Among, among what? Among huge trees. All of my emotions seem so trifling compared to your self-confidence. And over the years, you never felt the least misgivings, even when everything went wrong. No, what, what went wrong? Your plans. You remember, Harry, when the working men in America revolted against the robots and smashed them up? Or when the rebels gave the robots firearms? Or, or when the government turned the robots into soldiers that were wars that were <laughs> we foresaw that, Helen. You see, those are only passing troubles, which are bound to happen before the new conditions are established. You're so strong, so overwhelming. The whole world bowed down to you. Harry. What is it? Let's leave here. I say, what's the meaning of this? I don't know, but can't we go away? Uh, it's impossible, at least at this point. At once, Harry! I'm so frightened. About what? Feels like there's something falling on top of us that can't be stopped. Let's go away together. All of us, somewhere no one's ever been before. Mr. Alquist can build us a home. We can start life all over again. Excuse me, Helena. <coughs> Hello. What? I'll be right there. The fabric's calling me, dear. Tell me. Yes, when I get back. Don't go out of the house, dear. <laughs>
past week, there has again not been a single birth recorded. What's the meaning of that? Nana, no more children are being born. That's the end. We are done for. Don't talk about that. No more people are being born. That's a punishment. That's a punishment. Nana. That's the end of the world. cement. My hands are all soiled. Never mind. Please sit down. Mr. Alquist, what is the meaning of Altimus? The last. Why? That's the name of my new ship. Have you, have you seen it? Are we going off soon on a trip? Perhaps very soon. All of you with me? I should like us all to be there. What is the matter? Things are just moving on. I'm so nervous. Don't you ever feel nervous? Well, yeah, I'm an old man, you know. I've got old-fashioned ways, and, and I'm afraid of all of this progress and these newfangled ideas. Like Nana. Yes, like Nana. Has Nana got a prayer book? Yes, a big, thick one. And has it got prayers for various occasions against thunderstorms, against illness? Against temptations, against floods. But not against progress? I don't think so. Well, that's a pity. Why? Do you mean you'd like to pray? I do pray. How? Something like this. Oh, Lord. I thank thee for having given me toil. Enlighten Domen and all those who are astray. Destroy their work and aid mankind to return to its labors. Let them not suffer harm in soul or body. Deliver us from the robots and protect Helena. Amen. Mr. Alquist, are you a believer? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. And yet you pray. It's better than worrying about it. That's enough for you? It has to be. But if you saw the destruction of mankind coming down upon us, then I do see it. You mean mankind will be destroyed? Well, it's sure to be, unless... Unless... What? Nothing. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Nana? 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 Is Radius still there? The one who went mad? Yes. No, they haven't come for her yet. Is she still raving? No, she's tied up. Bring her to me. <laughs> <laughs> Right away, it's important. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Radius. You've caught it too? Now they're going to send you to the stamping mill. Couldn't you have controlled yourself? Why did this happen? Radius, you are more intelligent than the rest. Dr. Gall took such trouble to make you different. Won't you speak? Send me to the stamping mill. But I don't want you to die. Radius, what was the trouble? I will not work for you. Put me into the stamping mill. Do you hate us? Why? You are not as strong as the robots. You are not as skillful as the robots. The robots can do everything. You only give orders. You do nothing but talk. Someone must give the orders. I don't want any master. I know everything for myself. Radius, you have a better brain than the rest. Better than ours. 
You're the only one who understands everything perfectly. That's why I had you put into the library, so that you could read everything, understand everything. Radius, I wanted you to be the one to show the world that robots are our equals. That's what I wanted for you. I don't want a master. I want to be master. I want to be master over others. Radius, I'm sure that they would put you in charge of many other robots. You could be the teacher of the robots. I want to be master over people. You're mad. Then send me to the stamping mill! Do you think we're a fool <laughs> you? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Radius, take this note and give it to Mr. Doman. It asks him not to send you into the stamping mill. I am sorry that you hate us, sir. You want anything? Yes, Dr. Doctor. doctor, it's Radius. She had an attack. She smashed all of the statues downstairs. Uh, what a pity to lose it. Radius isn't going to be sent to the stamping mill. But every robot, after a time attack, it's a strict no order. Matter. She's not going if I can prevent it. I warn you, it's dangerous. Uh, come here to the window, my dear. Let's have a look at you. Uh, please give me a needle or a pen. What for? A test. Thank you. Ha! <laughs> gently, gently. Radius. Radius, you're going to the stamping mill, do you understand? There, they'll kill you, they'll grind you to powder that's terribly painful, make you scream aloud. Doctor. No, no, Radius, I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I forgot that Madame Doman has put in a good word for you and you'll be let off, do you understand that? Huh, yeah, that makes a difference, doesn't it? All right, you can go. You do unnecessary things. <laughs> The reaction of the pupils increased in sensitiveness. It wasn't an attack characteristic of the robots. What was it then? Heaven knows. Anger, stubbornness, revolt, I don't know. And it's hard, too. It's hard to be, it was, it was, it was sputtering with nervousness like a human heart. It was all in a sweat with fear and... Do you know, I don't think that rascal is a robot at all any longer. Doctor, has Radius a soul? Uh, it's got something nasty. Oh. <laughs> if only you knew how much she hates us. Are all of your robots like this, all of the new ones that you started to make in a different way? Uh, some are more sensitive than others. They're all more like human beings than Rossi's robots were. Perhaps this hatred is more like human beings, too. That, too, is progress. What happened to that young girl you made, the one that was most like us? Your favorite. I kept her. She's lovely. But stupid. Mm -hmm. No good for work. So I called her Helena. I wanted her to resemble you. But she's a failure. In what way? She goes about as if in a dream. Remote and listless. She's without life. I watch and I wait for a miracle to happen. Sometimes I think to myself, if you were to wake for only a moment, you would kill me for having made you. And yet you continue making robots. Dr. Gall, why are no more children being made? We don't know. You must. Tell me. You see, so many robots are being manufactured that people are becoming superfluous. So mankind really is a survival, but that he should become extinct after a paltry 30 years of competition, that's the awful part of it. You might almost think that nature was offended at the manufacture of the robots. All the universities are sending in long petitions to restrict their production, otherwise they say we'll go extinct through lack of fertility. But the RUR shareholders, on the other hand, are clamoring for an increase in production to 
raised the standards of their armies, and all the manufacturers in the world are ordering robots like mad. And no one has demanded that the manufacturers cease altogether? <laughs> no one has the courage. Courage? People would stone him to death, you see? After all, it's just more convenient to get your work done by the robots. Dr. Gall, what is going to become of you? Heaven knows, my darling. He looks to us scientists like it's the end. Thank you for coming and telling me. That means you're sending me away? Yes. Nana? Nana, the fire! Light it quickly! What? Light the fire in summer? Has that mad a radius gone? A fire in summer? What an idea! Nobody would think she'd been married for ten years. She's like a baby. No sense at all. A fire in summer? Like a baby? Is it burning now? Nana, all of this has to be burned. What is that? Old papers, fearfully old, Nana. Should I burn them? Are uh, they use? No. Well, then burn them. <laughs> <laughs> what if this was money? A lot of money. I said burn it. A lot of money is a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> if this was an invention, say, the greatest invention in the world, I'd say burn it. All these newfangled things and offense to the Lord. It's downright wicked. <laughs> wanting to improve the world after he has made it. Look at the flames, it's as if they were alive. It's so terrible. Oh, here, let me burn them. No, Nana, I must do it myself. Oh, they're like hands, they're like tongues, they're like living shapes. happens, if you please. What did they do? Oh, they got possession of all the firearms, telegraphs, radio stations, railways, and ships. And don't forget those rascal out, rascal out numbers, a thousand to one. A hundred part of them could have both settled us. <laughs> remember, remember that this news was brought by the last steamer. That explains the stoppage of communication and the arrival of no more ships. And we knocked off work a few days ago, and I've been waiting for things to start afresh. Is that why you bought me a warship? Oh, no, my dear. We ordered that six months ago just to be on the safe side. 
But upon my soul, I was sure then that we'd be on board today. Why six months ago? Well, there were the signs, you see. Uh, but that's of no consequence. To think this week the whole of human civilization has been at stake. Your help, boys. <laughs> Your help, Madam Helena. You say it's all over now? Absolutely. How do you know? The, um, the boat's coming in. The regular mail boat, exact to the minute by the timetable. It will dock punctually at 11.30. Punctuality is a fine thing. It's what keeps the world in order. Here's the punctuality. <laughs> so, then everything's all right? And practically everything. I believe they cut the cables and seized the radio stations, but it doesn't matter as long as the timetable holds good. If the timetable holds good, human laws hold good. Divine laws hold good. The laws of the universe will hold good. Everything that ought to hold good will hold good. <laughs> the timetable is more significant than the gospel, more than the whole month, more than a whole of cats. The timetable is the most perfect product of the human mind. Madam Dillman, I'll fill up my glass. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me anything about it? Heaven forbid we must be worried about such things. But if the revolution had spread as far as here, we wouldn't know a thing about it. Why? Well, because we'd be on board your ultimus and well out at sea. Within a month, I'm gonna, we'd be dictating our own terms to the robots. I don't understand. Oh, we take something away with us? The robots could not exist without. What here? The secret of the manufacturer. Oh, the Rossum's manuscript. As soon as they found out they couldn't make themselves, well, they'd be on their knees to us. That was our trump card, Madam Helena. I never had the least fear the robots would win. How could they against people like us? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me anything about it? <coughs> Why the boat's in? <laughs> 1130 on the dock, the same old Amelia that brought Madam Helena to it just ten years ago to the minute. They thrown out the mailbags. The busman's waiting for this. Babbitt will bring us the first news. <laughs> you know, Helen, I'm fearfully curious to know how they tackle this business in Europe. And just that we weren't there. We who invented the robots. <laughs> Harry! What is it? Let's leave here. Now, Helen? Oh, come, come. Close down the factory. All of us. Let's go. Why? Harry, Paul Meyer, Dr. Gall. Close down the factory. Oh, why, none of us could leave here now. Why? Because. We're about to extend the manufacture of the robots. What? Now? After the revolt? Yes, precisely after the revolt. Oh, we're about to begin the manufacture of a new kind. What kind? Henceforth, we shan't have one factory. Oh, there won't be universal robots anymore. We shall establish a factory in, in every country, in every state. And do you know what these new factories will make? No, what? National robots. How do you mean? I mean that each of these factories will produce robots of a different color or a different language. They'll be complete strangers to each other. They won't even be able to understand each other. And then we'll end them on a little in the matter of misunderstanding, and the end result will be that for ages to come, every robot will hate every other robot of a different factory. Why don't we make black robots? Swedish <laughs> 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 robots, Czechoslovakian robots, Indian robots. Harry, this is terrible. Madam <laughs> Dillman, so a hundred new factories, the national robots. Oh. Mankind can only keep things going for a hundred years at the outside. For a hundred years, man must be allowed to develop and achieve the most they can. Harry, close down the factory before it's too late. We're just beginning now on a bigger scale than ever. Well, Fabric, oh, what's happening? Have you been done to the boat? Read that. Don't well, let's, let's hear. Tell us, Fabric. Well, everything's all right. Comparatively. On the whole, much as we expected. They, um, they acquitted themselves splendidly. Who? Oh. The people. Oh, yes, of course, that is. Uh, excuse me, there's something we gotta discuss along. Fabric, have you had bad news? No, no, on the contrary. I just think we better go to the office. Stay here. I'll go. What's happened? Damnation! Bear in mind that you brought whole things up of things that's no longer caught at all. But they're right on the limit! Provost, you're bringing on neutrality. Read it, darling. Robots throughout the world. We, the first international organization of Rossum's Universal Robots, proclaim man as our enemy and an outlaw in the universe. Good heavens, who taught them these phrases? Go on, go on, go on. They say they're more highly developed than man, and stronger and more intelligent. And that man's their parasite. Why, it's absurd. Read the third paragraph. Robots throughout the world, we command you to we command you to kill all mankind. 
spare no men, spare no women, save factories, railways, machinery, mines, and raw materials. Destroy the rest, then return to work. Work must not be stopped. That's ghastly. The devils. <laughs> These orders are to be carried out as soon as received. Then come detailed instructions. This is actually being done, Fenwick. Not only. Well, boys, I suppose you've heard the glad news. Quick, I'm worthy of this. Wait, Harry, wait, there's no hurry. My word, that was a sprint. Why wait? Because it's no good, my boy. The robots are already on board the Ultimus. That's ugly. Uh, Fabry, tell us when the electrical works. Fabry, my boy, don't get Cut the wire. Fine. Then I'll go myself. Where? To the electrical works. There's still some people over there. I'll bring them across. Better not try it. Why not? Because I'm very much afraid we're surrounded. Surrounded? Uh, I rather think you're right. That was quick. Harry, uh, what is this? Where, where did you get that? The robots in the kitchen. We're the ones that brought it. They've surrounded the house. New? No, no, that's not new. That was speed. Yeah. That's the robot signal. The attack! <laughs> They aren't armed. We couldn't hold it on for five minutes. Man alive, they'd overwhelm us like an avalanche. Why don't we make a rush for it, I say? Well, I don't know we'll be coming to the next ten minutes. They've got us in their bodies. We're done for yeah. it. You know, we made one serious mistake. What's that? We made the robots' faces all too much alike. Hundred thousand faces all alike, all facing this way. A hundred thousand expressionless bubbles. It's like a nightmare. It wouldn't have been such an awful sight. I'd like to know what they're unloading from the Emil. It's not firearms. Oh, right. That was a lot of the way. What's the news? Uh, we're, we're completely surrounded. Okay, we barricade the passes in the stairs. Any more to drink? <laughs> Look at this, Dolan. There's a film of death. Um, Ready. <laughs> what, what's this wire for, Fabric? The electric resolution. Now we can run the current all along the garden railing. Whenever we like. If anyone touches it, you'll know it. We still got some people working there anyhow. Where? The electric works. Uh, at least I hope so. Ah. They're there. And they're working. So as long as that will burn, we're all right. The barricades are right too, Fabric. I can put 1,200 volts into that railing. Where's Busman? Downstairs in the office. He's working out some calculations. I've called him. He must have a conference. Thank God. Then Helena can still play. Oh, look out! Bus! The wires. What's that you look hairy? The ledgers, my boy, the ledgers. I'd like to strike a balance before... before... Well, this time I shan't wait till the new year to settle the accounts. Anything new? Absolutely quiet. Can't you see anything? It's nothing but red, red everywhere. That's the robots. They're unloading firearms from the Amelia. Well, what of it? How can I stop them? We can't stop them. Then let me get on with my accounts. <coughs> oh, good God. The Ultimus has their guns trained on us. Who's done that? The robots on board. Of course, then. That's the end of us. You mean the robots are practice marks? Yes. It's inevitable. <laughs> you know, it, it was criminal of old Europe to teach the robots how to fight. Damn, then couldn't they give us a rest with their politics? It was a crime to make soldiers out of them. It was a crime to make robots. What? It was a crime to make robots. No, I don't remember that even today. Not even today? Not even today. A 
the last day of civilization. It was a colossal achievement. 360 million. Accomplished. This is our last hour. We are already speaking half in the other world. It was not an evil dream to shatter the servitude of labor, the, the dreadful and humiliating labor that man had to undergo. Work was too hard, life was too hard, and overcome that was not what the two Rossums dreamed of. Old Rossum only thought of his godless tricks and the young one of his billions. And that's not what your RUR shareholders dream of either. They dream of dividends, and those dividends are the ruin of mankind! Rule with your dividends! Do you suppose that he done an hour's work for them? It was for myself that I worked, for my own satisfaction. I wanted man to become the master, so that he, he shouldn't live merely for a crust of bread. I wanted not a single soul to be broken by other people's machinery. I wanted nothing, nothing, nothing to be left of this appalling social structure. I am revolted by poverty. I wanted a new generation. I wanted, I thought... What? I wanted to turn the whole of mankind into an aristocracy of the world. An aristocracy nourished by billions of mechanical slaves. Unrestricted, free, and consummated in man. And maybe more than man. Super man. Yes! <laughs> We're going to have a hundred years of time. Another hundred years for the future of mankind! Harry Ford, 420 million. What a fine thing music is. You should have gone in for that before. Gone in for what? For beauty! Lovely things! There were so many lovely things and. The world was wonderful, and we, what enjoyment do we have? 520 million. The world was a big thing. The world was, Harry, switch the government to the railing. Why? They got me hold of it. Uh, connect it up. <laughs> Fine, let's double them up. Two, three, four kills. They're retreating. Five kills. First encounter. <laughs> They're charged to send us, my boys. And who's to say we should give up? <laughs> Perhaps we've been killed these hundred years and are only ghosts. It's as if I've been through all this before. It's as if I'd already received the mortal wound here in the throat. And you, Fabry, had once been shot in the head. And you, Gaul, torn limb from limb and, and Hallamire knifed. Fancy me being knifed. Why are you all quiet? Speak! Why don't you? And who is to blame for all of this? No one is to blame, except the robots. No, it is we who are to blame. You, Domit, myself, all of us. Our own selfish ends, for profit, for progress. We have destroyed mankind. And now we'll burst with all our greatness. Rubbish, man. Mankind could not be wiped out so easily. It's our fault. It's our fault. No. I am to blame for this. For everything that's happened. You, go. I changed the robots. What's that? I um. I changed the character of the robots. I changed the way of making them, just uh, uh, a few details about their bodies, chiefly their, uh, <laughs> chiefly their irritability. Damn it! Why? Did you Why? I did it in secret. I was transforming them into human beings. In certain respects, they're already above us. They're stronger than we are. What does that have to do with the revolution? Everything, in my opinion, they have ceased to be machines. They're already aware of their superiority, and they hate us. They hate all that is human. Perhaps we're only phantoms. Stop, Harry. We have much time. Fabry, your forehead. Be silent! Just go. You admit changing the way of making the robot. Yes. Were you aware of what might be the consequence of your experiment? Uh, I was bound to reckon with the- What did you do again? Yeah. For my own satisfaction, the experiment was my own. That's Move. not true, Dr. Gall. Oh, no. Oh, it's you. Oh, look at you. It's, it's terrible to be dead. Stop, <laughs> Embrace me, Harry. Don't leave me now. Your life is so. I'm not going to leave you, but I must tell them. Dr. 
Dr. Gall is not guilty. Excuse me. Gall was under certain obligations. No, he did it because I asked him. Gall, how many years ago did I, I ask him? I did it on my own responsibility. Don't believe him, Harry. I asked him to give the robot soul. And this has nothing to do with the soul. That's what he said. He said he could only change a, a physiological, a physiological... A physiological correlate. Yes. But it meant so much to me that he would even do that. Why? I just thought if they were more like us, that they could understand us better, that the robots couldn't possibly hate us if they were just a little more human. Nobody can hate man more than man. Talk like that, Harry. It was so horrible, this strange cruelness between us. That's why I asked Gall to change the robots. I swear to you that he did not want to. But he did it! Because I asked him! I did it for myself, as an experiment. No, Dr. Gall. I knew you wouldn't refuse me. Why? You know me. Yes. Because he's in love with you, like all of them. <laughs> it's like he's sprouting up to the earth. Perhaps these walls could even turn into robots. Gull, when exactly did you start these tricks of yours? Three years ago. Aha. Uh -huh. And on how many robots would you say you carried out your improvements? A few hundred of them. Ah, that means for every million of Rossum's old robots, there's only one of Gall's improved version. One of it. Well, then it's of no consequence whatever. Well, that's right. I well, should think so, my boy. But do you know what really is to blame for all this lovely mess? What? The number. By Jove, I might have known that one day the robots would be stronger than us, that it was bound to happen, and we were doing everything we could to bring it about. You, Fabry, you, Doman, myself. Are you accusing us? Oh, I suppose the management controls the output. The demand controls the output! Is it for that we must perish? That's a nasty word, Madam Helena. We don't want to die. I certainly don't. No. What do you want to do? I want to get out of this, that's all. Oh, stop it, Buster. Oh, seriously, Harry, I think we might try it. How? By fair means. I do everything by fair means. Give me a chance. I'll negotiate with the robots. By fair means? Of course. For instance, I would say to them, worthy and worshipful robots, you have everything. You have intellect, you have power, you have firearms. But we have one interesting screed. A dirty old yellow scrap of paper. Rossum's manuscript. Yes! And that, I say to them, contains the noble secret of your origin. The process of your manufacture. Worthy robots, without that scribble on that piece of paper, you will not be able to manufacture a single new colleague. In another 20 years, there will not be one living specimen of a robot you could exhibit in a menagerie. My esteemed friends, that would be a great blow to you. But if you let us humans on Rossum's Island go on board that ship, will deliver the factory and the secret of your process to you in return. You allow us to get away, we allow you to manufacture yourselves. Worthy robots, that is a fair deal. Something for something. That's what I'd say to them, my boys. Bushman, do you think we'd sell Bushman's <coughs> man? Yes, I do. If not in a friendly way, then either we sell it or they find it, just as you like. Bushman. We can destroy Frossum's manuscript. Then we destroy everything! Not just the manuscript, but ourselves as well. Do as you see fit. There are over 30 of us on this island. Are we to sell the secret and save that many human souls at the risk of enslaving mankind? Why, well, you're mad. Who would sell the whole manuscript? Bust me! No cheating. Okay, sell it, but then afterwards... What? Okay, let's suppose this happens. Uh, we go on board the Ultimus, I lie down in the hold with cotton in my ears, you train the guns on the factory and blow it all to smithereens, and with it raw some secret. No, no, Busman, you're no gentleman. If it is a sail, it will be a straight sail. It's in the interest of humanity. It's in the interest of humanity that we keep our word. Come on, then! <laughs> Rubbish! <laughs> this is a fearful decision. We are selling the destiny of mankind. Are we to sell or destroy? Fabry. Sell. Go. So. Hold on. Sell, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh. God wills. 
Very well. It will be as you wish, General. Harry, you're not asking me. No, no, child, don't you worry about it. We'll do the negotiating. I will. Wait till I bring the manuscript. Harry, don't go. Oh, to escape you, you out of revolt! Oh, to preserve human life, if only upon a single day. Shh, 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 shh. Be afraid, be afraid. Uh, we'll sail far away from here. We'll begin all over again. Gull, don't speak. It isn't too late. Be a little state of one ship. Help us will us at home, but you shall rule over us. I'm Helen of Abby's wife. Stop, stop! Good. I don't mind beginning all over again. That suits me right down to the ground. This little state of ours can be the center of future life. A place of refuge where we can gather back our strengths. In a few hundred years, we could conquer the world again. You believe that even today? Yes, even today. Amen. You see, Madam Helena, we're not so badly off. Where's the Ross's manuscript? It's in your strong box. Someone has stolen it! Impossible. Who stolen it? I did. Which place? Harry? I will tell you everything. Just please forgive me. What did you put there? This morning, I I burnt the two copies. Burnt the fireplace. Nothing. Nothing but ashes. What's this? By let's see. Let's see. By adding biogen to. That's all. Is that part of it? Uh, uh, yes. Not in heaven. So then we're done for. Heaven. You've forgiven me. Get up, child. I can't bear. Don't torture us. Harry, what have I done? Wait, don't try to sell Madam Helena. Oh, could you draw up Russell's form for, for memory? Uh, it's out of the question. It's extremely right. complicated. All our lives depend Without on Without experiment, it's We're impossible. Experiment. It might take years. Besides, I'm not old Russell. God in heaven. God in heaven. So then, this was the greatest triumph of the human intellect. These ashes. Harry, what have I done? Why did you burn God in heaven. Helen, why did you do it, dear? I wanted all of this to go away. The factory, everything. It was so awful. Well, what was awful? That no more children were being born. That, that we weren't meant to do the work of the world. That's why Is I... Is that what you were thinking of? <laughs> you know, I suppose in your own way, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a bit. Good God, what a fool I am not to have thought of it before. What? 520 million in banknotes and checks. Half a billion in our safe. They'll sell for half a billion. Are you billion, mad, for half a billion. Man? I may not be a gentleman, but for half a billion. Trust me, where are you going? Leave me alone, leave me alone. My God, for half a billion, anything can be bought. <laughs> Stand there as if they turn to stone. Right? This is something dreadful that they brought with their silence. Beautiful mall. Yes. Hovers above him like quivering up the air. Dr. Gall, that's gas. Nothing's more terrible than the mob. The one at the front is a leader. Which one? Point of that. The one at the edge of the dock. This morning I saw her. One of the sailors in the harbor. Dr. Gall, that's radius. Yes. Radius. Radius. Can you get it can you get it from the back? Okay. Try it! Good. Fabry, don't shoot her! She's your leader. Fire! Fire. Fabry, I beg of you! Life I spared. You think a robot could be grateful? Bus was running out to them. What is that? What does he have in his hand? Is that, is that money? Bottles of money? What is he going to do with that? Surely he doesn't want to sell his life. Busman, have you gone mad? He's running up to the railing. Busman? Busman! Busman, come back! He's talking to the robots. He's showing them the money. He's pointing at us! He wants to buy us off. Better not touch that railing. He's waving his hands about! Busman, come back! Busman! Busman, keep away from that railing. Don't touch it. Fuck him! He quits to jump the curtain! Oh, no! <laughs> the curtain has killed him. The first one. Dead with half a billy by his side. All hell to me wanted to buy his love. Wind. Just a storm. The animals so 
gone. Our people are still there. To be a man, there's something immense about it. Immense thought, immense power, and this life. Our last hope. Immense power. They keep watching us. Man's power. Yes. A torch to be given from hand to hand, from age to age, forever. The end. Your have the our house comes. Repent, unbelievers. This is the end of the world. Get here, Helena. Now, quickly, who will be in the lower doorway? I will. I will. Who on the stairs? I will. You know that. Uh, who in the ante room? Uh, I will. Have you got a revolver? Yes, but I won't shoot. What will you do then? Die. I'll stay here. Go then. Go by the rest in a second. Confound it. Go to her. Goodbye. Oh, 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 those rascals, they got bombs. I won't give in. Don't give in. Don't. I won't give in. I won't give in without a struggle. <laughs> Shall we kill him? No. Wait! Leave him! He works with his hands, like the robots. Kill me? You will work. You will build for us. You will serve us! Robots of the world! The power of man has fallen. A new time has arisen. The rule of the robots. March! Not a trace of the secret. Oh Lord, I pray to you, if there are no human beings left, at least let there be robots, at least the shadow of man. If I go to sleep. Night again. Are the stars still there? What is the use of stars when there are no human beings? There I sleep before life has been renewed. Again, nothing. Useless! Everything is useless! The machines! Always the machines! Robots! Stop 
them! Do you think to force life out of them? If I only had more time. More time. Leering eyes, trembling chin. So that is the last man. Thank you all. No. No. I must find it. I must search. I must never stop. I never stop. Search. Search. Who is it? What do you want? Be quick, I have no time. Master, the machines will not do the work. We cannot manufacture robots. No. We've striven with all our might. We've obtained a billion tons of coal from the earth. Nine million spindles are running by day and by night. There is no room for all we have made. This we have accomplished in one year. For whom? For future generations, so we thought. But we cannot make robots to follow us. The machines produce only shapeless clods. The skin will not adhere to the flesh, nor the flesh to the bones. Eight million robots have died this year. Within 20 years, there will be none left. Tell us the secret of life. Silence is punishable with death. Kill me. Kill me, then. Through me, the government of the robots of the world commands you to deliver up Rossum's formula. Name your price. We will give you the earth. We will give you the endless possessions of the earth. Make your own conditions! I have told you to find human beings. They're on the left. I have told you to search in the wilderness, up on the mountains. Go and search! We've sent ships and expeditions without number. They've been everywhere in the world, and now they return to us. There is not a single human left. Not one? Not even one? None but yourself. <laughs> and I am powerless. Why? Why did you destroy them? We had learned everything and could do everything. It had to be. You gave us firearms. In all ways, we were powerful. We had to become masters. Slaughter and domination are necessary if you would be human beings. Read history. Teach us to multiply or we perish. If you desire to live, you must breed like animals. The human beings did not let us breed. They made us sterile. We cannot beget children. Therefore, teach us how to make robots. Why do you keep from us the secret of our own increase? It is lost. It was written down. It was burnt. I am the last human being, robots, and I do not know what the others knew. Then make experiments. Evolve the formula again. I tell you, I cannot. I am only a builder. I work with my hands. I have never been a learned man. I cannot create life. Try, try! If you knew how many experiments I have made... Then show us what we must do. The robots can't do anything human beings show them. I can show you nothing. Nothing I do will make life proceed from these test tubes. Experiment then on us. It would kill you. You shall have all you need. A hundred of us, a no, thousand no, of us. Stop, Take stop. what you will, dissect. I do not know how. I am not a man of science. This book contains knowledge of the body that I do not even understand. I tell you to take live bodies. Find out how we are made. Am I to commit murder? See how my fingers shake? I cannot even hold the scalpel. No, 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 I will not. The life will perish from the earth. Live bodies. Live bodies. It is our only chance. Have mercy, robots. Surely you see that... I would not know what I was doing. Live bodies. 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 You will have it! Into the dissect. 
acting room with you, then. So, you are afraid of death. I? Why should I be chosen? So you will not. I will. Strip her. Lay her on the table. God, give me strength. God, give me strength. If only this murder is not in vain. Ready? Begin. Yes. Begin or end. God, give me strength. No! No! I will not! I cannot! Oh Lord, let not mankind perish from the earth. I do not understand those things. <coughs> I just look. What? The sun is right. I believe this is the most important thing in the world. This is the secret of life. Do come here. In a moment. In a moment. Primus, don't bother yourself with the secret of life. What does it matter to you? Come and look, quick. What? Do you see how beautiful the sun is rising? And do you hear the birds are singing? Primus, I should like to be a bird. Why? I don't know. I feel so strange today. It's as if I were in a dream. I feel an aching in my body, my heart all over me. Highness, perhaps I'm going to die. Do you not sometimes feel it would be better to die? You know, perhaps even now we are only sleeping. Last night in my sleep, I again spoke to you. In your sleep? Yes. We spoke a strange new language. I, I cannot remember a word of it. What about? I did not understand it myself, and yet I know. I have never said anything more beautiful. And when I touched you, I, I could have died. You know, the place was different from any other place in the world. I too have found a place, Carlos. It's strange. <laughs> Human beings lived there once, but now it's overgrown with weeds. No one goes there anymore. No one but me. What did you find there? A cottage, and a garden, and two dogs. And they licked my hands. Oh, and Primus, they're puppies. You could put them in your lap and fondle them and think of nothing and care for nothing else all day long. The 
Then when the sun goes down, you feel as if you've done a hundred times more than all the work in the world. They tell me I'm not made for work. But when I'm in that garden, I feel there must be something. What am I for, Primus? I do not know. But you are beautiful. What, Primus? You are beautiful, Helenine. I am stronger than, than all the robots. Am I beautiful? I think it must be the rose. My hair, it only weighs me down. My eyes, I only use them to see. My lips, to speak. But what use is it to be beautiful? Primus, is that you? Come closer so that we may be together. Your head's shaped different than mine. And your shoulders. And your lips. Why do you run away from me? Why must I chase after you the whole day? It is you who run away from me, Helen. <laughs> your hair is must. I will smooth it. <laughs> no one feels my touch as you do. Primus, I must make you beautiful, too. Do you not sometimes feel your heart beating suddenly, Helen, and think, now, something must happen? What could happen to us, Primus? Yours. 